Hey friends, it's Steven with Leviathan Snakes, and for this week's video, I want to talk about specialization versus diversification when it comes to breeding ball pythons. So this is a topic that I've talked about in the past, though I don't think I've talked about it on this channel. Um, most notably, there was maybe a year, year and a half or so ago, Adam from Proper Royals and I did a live where we went through like how we would spend $10,000. And really, the two kind of strategies that we used is I went for the specialization route and Adam had went to the diversification route. And it's not necessarily saying that one of these is inherently better than the other, like for sure, but I personally believe that the specialization is a better avenue for somebody who wants to breed ball pythons with the hopes of turning into a business. And I will talk about like my reasons why, kind of talk about like the different priorities people place on both of these different methods and which is more important to you. And then hopefully it might be able to help guide you as you are buying animals and starting to build your ball python breeding business. So first I want to apologize because there's a bunch of pollen outside and my throat is just destroyed right now. So that's why my voice is kind of scratchy and whatnot. But when it comes to breeding ball pythons in terms of your breeding strategy, diversification versus specialization. I think that both of these avenues kind of place different priorities on different aspects for the breeder. So we'll start with diversification. And I think that the two biggest priorities that are being placed in this kind of realm is the first one is freedom. The person who is trying to diversify all of their different ball pythons with different morphs and stuff like that, they're going to have more freedom to explore and go in different directions in the future because if they find a really cool combo or a really cool combo comes out that's part of the Ultramel project and they have a little bit of Ultramel, they will have a head start on that project versus getting into the project once they see that a cool combos come out. And I think that this happens all the time because there's so many cool projects that are always being discovered, so many cool combos that are always being hit every single season. So this freedom, I think, is a really, really important factor and one of the priorities that people place when they are trying to build a diversified ball python collection. Now, I think the second one, and probably, in my opinion, at least from the people I've heard about it, the main reason why people go for the diversified option is that they feel that it's safer. It mitigates the risk of their investment because the idea is if they're in a bunch of different projects and one project doesn't do well, they will have other projects that do do well and that those will offset any losses that they make on projects that don't do well. And I will talk about this in more depth in a little bit. I know I said but there's actually three and I think that the third one is the same on both avenues and I think that it is to get a return on their investment. People diversify all of their different ball pythons because the idea is that they want to get the money that they've put into it back and that they believe that by diversifying all of the different projects that they're in, they will have a better chance of having an animal that somebody wants to buy and therefore they'll be able to sell the animal better than if they were specialized in like one, two, or three different projects. So in my opinion, again, correct me if I'm wrong, if somebody really, really supports the diversified model and I did not hit like the priorities right, leave a comment down below and I would really, really appreciate hearing from you. So for the specialized model, I think that the benefits or the priorities that people are placing when they are wanting to specialize in specific projects is that they are really, really passionate about a specific project. So for us, it's Sunset. So this is Espeon. She is a single gene Sunset that we produced last season. And I think that a lot of people who go on the specialized route fall in love with like one, two, or three projects and they just want to explore and see what all of the different combos are like when it comes to that project. Whether they've already been made or they haven't been made and they just want to see what's really cool. So I think that that exploration is really, really important when it comes to specializing because it doesn't take long once you get into breeding ball pythons to realize how much space is really required to do it. And when you realize that you need a ton of space and a ton of enclosures in order to work any single project like really, really well, it becomes very, very apparent very, very quickly that you can't have a bunch of different projects going at one time just because you run out of space, you get overwhelmed by the amount of babies that you have, and ultimately it's not sustainable, at least when it comes to like a small time, like on the side of a regular job kind of situation. If it's your full-time income, that's a completely different situation. Now, 
I think that the other benefit of specialization is that it is easier to build up a reputation for yourself if you are specialized in a specific project. It is way easier to be known for breeding sunset ball pythons or desert ghosts or zebra or monsoon than it is to be known that you have a little bit of everything but not very deep in any specific project. The reason why I think that this is super important is I actually think that it makes it easier to recoup your investment later on because if everybody knows that you have really, really good sunset stuff and you get that reputation, when it comes time for somebody else to get into the project and they're asking people who they should go for, if your reputation is that you are really big into the sunset project, it's way more likely that people will recommend your brand over somebody who has a little bit of sunset and a little bit of clown and a little bit of zebra and a little bit of monsoon, but nobody really knows one specific project that they're really, really in. So I think that that reputation is one of the priorities that people place when they decide to specialize in specific projects. And then the last one, just like the diversification model, is getting a return on the amount of money that they have invested into it. And a lot of times people who go with the specialized route believe that they will have an easier time recouping their investment by specializing in one project and pushing that project further and further and further on the leading edge than if they were spread across a bunch of different projects and they weren't the leaders in any of them. These are kind of priorities. These are just my opinions. Again, if you guys disagree with them, leave a comment down below. But I wanna talk a little bit about why that second thing for the diversification, the idea that diversified ball python collections mitigates risk, isn't, in my opinion, actually um, a reflection of reality. People compare the ball python market and the stock market fairly often, but I personally think that those similarities are more surface level than useful when it comes to developing out a breeding strategy. If you are going to invest in stocks and companies and all of this stuff, it is very good advice and it's very common advice to diversify your investment. And this is to mitigate the amount of risk that you are exposed to because in general, stocks appreciate. And as long as there's not something crazy like a worldwide recession or anything like that, if you buy a stock today, 10 years from now, it's gonna be worth more money for the majority of companies. Now, what ends up happening is that some of them gain value, the majority of them gain value, some of them gain a lot of value, and then some of them lose a lot of value. But because you are spread out, you've diversified your investment, be the majority of your investments have gained value so they can offset the losses you have made in the ones that lost value. The All of that stuff it's the inverse for ball pythons. In ball pythons, all ball python projects lose value over time because there is more and more and more supply that is being created. And as there's more supply, there's less demand and that prices ultimately end up falling. So if you are spread across, let's say 25 different projects and you are trying to produce, let's say sunsets, and you buy a sunset today for four or $5,000, by the time you're able to produce babies, they're not gonna be worth four or $5,000. I don't necessarily know what they will be worth at that point in time, but let's say they're worth $2,000. If you have this on every single project where you have like one pair of sunsets, one pair of monsoon, one pair of clowns, one pair of hypos, so on and so forth, you will end up losing value on every single project. And the other thing that ends up happening is that most of the hobby gets really excited about a handful of projects, and I think that it doesn't really matter what they are, but you can kind of tell what they are based off of the buzz. So what ends up happening is that you might have two or three projects that are really popular and you're able to sell those clutches really quickly, but all the other babies sit and that you have a harder time being able to sell them. They're worth significantly less than what you invested in. But if you ended up picking something that you're really passionate about, like we have with Sunset, it doesn't necessarily matter if Sunset itself is super, super popular because you are more willing to hold back more of those animals because it's a project that you are wanting to work really, really hard. And if you are really, really passionate about the project and you're doing a lot to market it, this is a difference between the stock market is the ball python market can be advertised and that hype can be generated where it makes more people want to get into a specific project that you're working if you show how awesome that project is. So I think that when you are diversified and you have one pair, one pair, one pair of various different projects, it's very unlikely you are going to be the one who finds the combination of genes that lights the world on 
fire. But if you decide like, I really wanna work Sunset or Tri-Stripe or something like that, and you're doing a bunch of different pairings for Sunset, Tri-Stripe, or anything like this, it is way more likely you will find that one combination of genes that looks wild and amazing and it makes other people want to join the project and you have the supply to work it at that point. So I actually think that specializing is a little bit of a safer option than diversifying because when you diversify, you're guaranteeing that the majority of your projects are gonna lose value and that they won't have as much hype when you are ready to make babies than when you buy into them. And if you are specialized in something that you are really, really passionate and you really, really believe it's way more likely that you are able to influence the market and make other people excited and other people passionate about it so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like comment subscribe and we will see you next week